Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of Fast Behind the Modules. This is lesson three, identifying proportional and non-proportional relationships in tables. Example one, you have been hired by your neighbors to babysit their children on Friday night. You are paid $8 per hour. Key term, you are paid $8 per hour. Complete the table relating to you, your pay to the number of hours you've worked. So if I worked one hour, I got $8. Two hours. You can either do two times the hourly rate or just add eight to this one because it's one more hour. But we can't do that because you have to be careful here. We're not going one, two, three, four, five. It's went to four and a half, five, six, it's went to six and a half. So I don't want to just keep adding eight each time or it'll be wrong. So let's just multiply by the hours worked times the eight dollars per hour. So really we're saying eight H, eight dollars per hour equals your pay. So when eight is one, or I'm sorry, when H is one, Eight times one is eight dollars. When H is two, we get eight dollars times two hours is sixteen, and so on and so on. So we're going to multiply eight times three, twenty-four. Eight times four, thirty-two. Eight times four and a half. Well, four is thirty-two, and a half of eight is four, so we just have to add four dollars here. Or you could say eight times four point five, and you'd get thirty. Six. Eight times five is forty. Eight times six is forty-eight. And eight times six point five is another half hour more than that, and a half hour is four dollars. We get eight dollars for an hour, four half of that is four. So then we're now at fifty-two dollars. Based on the table above, is the pay proportion to the hours worked? Yes. Because yes, the pay is proportional to the hours worked because every ratio of the amount of pay to the number of hours worked is the same. The ratio is eight to one, and every measure of hours worked multiplied by eight will result in the corresponding measure of pay. Okay. Now exercise. For exercise one through three, determine if y is proportional to x and justify your answer. Okay, bring this back down here. The table below represents the relationship of the amount of snowfall in inches in five counties to the amount of time in hours of a recent winter storm. So we have x time two hours. 10 inches of snowfall, 6 hours, 12 inches, 8 hours, 60, 2 and a half inches, 5 hours, 7 hours, I'm sorry, 2 and a half hours, 5 inches, 7 hours, 14 inches. Okay, so is this proportional? Well, what we need to do is determine if we're multiplying by the same value to get from 2 to 10. So in other words, we're going to divide y Take y and divide it by 2 to find out what we multiplied by. So 10 divided by 2 equals 5. So we multiply 2 times 5 to get 10. Now we're going to do the same with 6. 12 divided by 6 equals 2. So I multiplied 6 by 2 to get this. So these two numbers are different. So the answer I already know is no. But I'm going to continue and show you the rest of these to get in the habit of figuring out how we're going to do this, and that is 2. So there's a 2. 5 times 2.5, or 5 divided by 2.5 is 2. So that's a 2. And then 14 divided by 7 is definitely 2. So they're all 2 except for this 5 here. So if this time and snowfall amount was not in here, then this would be proportional. But since this is different, then no, it is not proportional, and here's the reason. Y, snowfall, is not proportional to x time because of all of the values of the ratios comparing snowfall to time are not equivalent. 
all of the values of the ratios must be the same for the relationships to be proportional. There is not one number such that each measure of x times multiplied by the number of gives the corresponding measure of y. Very detailed explanation. Number two, the table below shows the relationship between the cost of renting a movie in dollars to the number of days the movie is rented. So again, we're going to take the two with the y and divide it by x. So two divided by six equals one third or 0.3 repeating. Okay. Nine divided by three is three. I'm sorry, I'm going the wrong way. Three divided by nine is a third. Eight divided by 24 is one third. And one divided by three is obviously one third. So these are all one third. That when we divided two by six, three by nine, eight by 24, and one by three, they're all one third. Since they are all the same, then we have a proportion. So y cost is proportional to x number of days because all the values of the ratios comparing costs to days are equivalent. All of the values of the ratios are equal to one third. Therefore, every measure of x days can be multiplied by the number one third to get each corresponding measure of y cost. Three. The table below shows the relationship between the amount of candy bought in pounds and the total cost of candy dollars. So this is another example of this. So we're just going to do the same thing. 10 divided by 5 equals 2. So that was 2. 8 divided by 4 equals 2. So that's 2. 12 divided by 6 equals 2. And 16 divided by 8 equals 2. And then finally, 20 divided by 10 equals 2. And the answer is yes. Okay. The relationship is proportional because we're multiplying 2 times the amount of candy and getting these correct cost numbers. I'm not going to bring in that long sentence. It's similar to the previous two. Number four. Randy is planning to drive from New Jersey to Florida. Every time Randy stops for gas, he records the distance he traveled in miles and the total number of gallons used. Assume that the number of miles driven is proportional to the number of gallons consumed in order to complete the table. So what we want to focus on whenever a table has been started is values that you know both. Okay? And take 54 divided by 2 and it equals 27. 216 divided by 8 equals 2. 8 times 2 is 16. 7 times 27. Okay? So those are proportional. So those two are 27, so I'm going to continue now and finish filling this in. So now I just have to take 4 times 27 and get 108. And I'm going to take 10 times 27 and get 270. And take 12 times 27 and get 270 plus 54. Okay, and 54 times 12. I'm sorry, 27 times 12 is 324. Now, in order to get this value, you have to take 189 and divide it by 27. So we're going the other direction. That's why I left this one for last. So 27 goes into 189. 7 times 7 times 7 is 49. 7, 14, and 40, 18. Yes, 7 times. Okay. So there we go. Gallon 7, 189 miles driven, and then 12 gallons, we can go 324 miles. Okay, that is the end of lesson three. Go do your problem set.